Hi there, RC Girl here. Today I'm back with a video about performance upgrades for the Traxxas TRX4. So I got in the mail a awesome box from RC Mart the other day and it came with a bunch of Ya yeah Racing hop up parts. So I got the brass upgrade kit and the metal axle housing kit. These things are gonna be super sick. I really wanna do something that's gonna make the rig a lot more capable on the trail. The theory is if you can bring some weight down low and lower your center of gravity and also add some weights to the front end to keep it down when you're crawling, that it's gonna be a lot better performing rig. I'll show you guys what comes in each of these kits and also some of the other awesome parts that I got, including the Desert Lizard internal spring shocks. So today we're gonna install these. I'm gonna do a before and after video of comparing the rig, how it crawls in my backyard crawler course before and after I add the weights. And let's see if we see any difference. Stay tuned. I got the Traxxas TRX4 from Marcy Mart about a year ago, and a year in, I'm still super jazzed about this rig. It's a ton of fun. So most of the upgrades I've done in the past year have been aesthetic. So I got a cool Mitric RC light kit. I got some Knight Customs parts, and of course, an upgraded servo. I did a video about that if you guys wanna see it. And it's pretty well known that the Defender body in the Traxxas TRX4 is one of its downfalls. It is a little bit top heavy, but I'm not gonna not run the Defender body because I just love it so much. So how can you get better performance out of your rig? That's where these weights come in. It's gonna wanna hug the train a little bit more. That's the theory anyway. So let's dive in. I wanna show you guys what comes in each of these kits. So this is like the full kit. So you don't have to buy the individual components if you want, you can buy it as a set. The brass upgrade kit comes with a ton of different parts in it. And we'll zoom in on these and I'll go over each of them and where they go on the rig and then we'll install them. The Traxxas TRX4 is known for its portal axle. So it raises the rig off the ground a little bit more by these gears in here. I've only taken these apart once, so we're gonna have to take out the gears and replace the housings with these. And I think these, since I already have these portal covers for the front, I might use these for the rears, but we'll have to try that out. And then we have the C-hubs, and this is how your steering pivots. These are brass C-hubs, the ones that comes with their plastic. Looks really cool too. And then next we have our hex adapter. So this goes, I believe your wheel fits over that and locks on. And these are gonna be a replacement to the existing one. I know I'm using the packaging as well. I don't wanna lose all the screws that goes with each of the components. So that adds about 358 grams with the brass upgrade kit. Next I have the 118 gram brass portal covers. These are gonna go on the front portals of my rig. You don't wanna add too much to the front because it's gonna alter your descent capability. But when you're climbing, you want that front end to stay down. So adding weight up front is supposedly gonna help out with that. So our brass portals are each 118 grams each. Gives you about 243. And then in this box, we have the full metal axle upgrade kit. And that comes with both front and rear machine metal axles. These things are super cool looking. The Traxxas TRX4 currently has plastic axle housings and these are one piece. This is all machine metal. And it has these cool little features around the side here. It looks really awesome and it's gonna add some weight. It also comes with skid plates for your diff box covers. It also comes with two metal diff covers. These things look really cool. These are gonna add a nice mean look, but also add some weight down low. And then what I really like too is that this is a really nice and tight fit. Some aftermarket parts don't fit very well and they're cheap, but these look really high quality and they're actually kind of hard to get off. So that's gonna be a nice tight seal, hopefully. It also comes with all the hardware you need to install each of the components and then some Yao Racing decals. We'll have to add these to the TRX4. So we're gonna weigh our metal axles, diff box cover, our skid plates. I'm not adding the hardware, but that adds about 355 grams together. And then next, I'm really excited about these actually. These are the Desert Lizard internal spring shocks. They also come with an extra chamber. I guess it's called the piggyback. So you can fill that extra chamber with oil as well. These just came out, so there's not a ton of videos on them. Another company does make something similar. So I watched a couple videos on how to set these up. There's a lot of different ways that people do them. Some people take out the springs, some people run them with no oil at all, and some people fill up both chambers with oil. So I don't know about that. I'm gonna try out filling with oil first. I do really like the shocks that come stock, but we'll have to try out something different and see if we get better performance. So let's take out one of these. Here's the hardware, and these are the extra chambers. So it's a hose that screws in to the shock body here. So there's an internal spring inside here, and these seal off, and then you attach 
this hose to the side. There's also an O-ring in here that keeps it sealed. And then we have our other chamber that also has oil in it as well. That's one way to set it up. I'll try out one of the setup options for the fronts and see if we wanna make any changes for the rears. And then they come with this metal clamp here where you can clamp the chamber onto the side of the shock. We'll see what works and what fits on the Traxxas TRX4, but these are gonna look really cool. I'm hoping that they perform just as well as they look. And then lastly, I've been wanting this for a long time. This isn't really a performance upgrade, more of a convenience upgrade. And this is the start trigger, so you can power on the ESC without having to take off the body every time. So kind of a cool thing and really excited about this. So for this install, we're going to need a couple things, including our shock oils and diff loops. Next, I have blue thread lock. We're going to thread lock some of the nuts and screws that we don't want to come loose because we're going to be doing some greasing. We want to make sure that that's not also going to make our other screws that we want to stay in back out. And then next, we have grease and some gloves for your hands to stay clean. We're going to have to grease the gears in the axles when we take them apart. I'm using EPX cycle grease. I also use this on my mountain bike. I think it's also going to be great for the gears in the TRX4. A lot of people use marine grease. That'll also work too, but this is what I have handy. Lastly, to make the job a lot easier, I have my electric drill and my hex bits. These have been really handy. I'll put a link to these. Actually, these are one of my favorite cheap things that you can get that makes your life with RC a lot easier. I've never actually taken the axles apart or done any major work on the Traxxas TRX4 other than some light maintenance and shock oil replacement. So this is gonna be interesting. I watched a couple videos on how to take apart the rig and get to the axles and all that. So I'm basically an expert, <laughs> but it doesn't look too hard as long as we keep track of our hardware. And uh, yeah, let's, once we get in there, we can also take a look and re-grease anything and clean everything out that needs to be cleaned. All right, so let's get the TRX4 ready to work on. Let's take the tires off and we're gonna weigh it so we can get a comparison before and after we do any of the install of the upgrade parts. And yeah, so let's get the scale and weigh the chassis. All right, we got 2290, and that is with everything, no battery, no tires, just the chassis and everything that's on it, stock. So now that we have our axle off of the car, we're gonna transfer all our components over to the new metal axle housing. And these are the C-hubs that fit on the end here. And I think some of the hardware, like this little piece here, some of it has to transfer over. And then we're gonna take all the gears out of here, clean them, re-lube them, and install them in this one, and then put that back into the TRX4. All right, let's uh, speed that up. One thing I noticed as I was installing the metal portal housings and the portal weights was that they replace the pivot arm, the C arm here. They replace the bushing that comes with the plastic one. Here it is right here. With an actual bearing. So I thought that was kind of cool. So I finished installing the portal housings and transferred over all the gears. This is the old portal box and this is our new one with the portal weight as the outside housing. Everything's super smooth. I greased everything that touches metal on metal. All the bearings are greased. And I put some thread lock on the screws that hold these two sides together. So it's looking really nice. Nice and smooth, turns really nicely. The parts fit really solid together so there's no give or anything. So now that we have our first one done, let's do our second one. And then we can disassemble the diff box here. Alrighty, now we have both of our portals assembled and we have our C-hubs on and these have absolutely no give in the joints. They're like really, really solid. So that's super nice. <clears throat> I feel like I'm getting more and more sick as this video goes on. All we have left to do now is take out our diff gears and put those in the new axle housing. So I think there's only a couple screws on here. We gotta make sure that we transfer this cable as well. This is the locker cable. Replace this diff cover with the new one and put everything back together. And there we go. I've never actually opened this up since I got the TRX4 a year ago. So 
I don't know what color that initially was, but it's looking a little bit rusty. It's still pretty smooth though. But I'm gonna take this assembly out here and transfer everything over to the new housing. So it's the next day. I had to take a break for a little bit. I was getting a little bit um, overwhelmed, I guess. I had to take apart a few things and uh, assembled something improperly. So I had to take it apart a couple times, but we're good. I have the front end, front axle all assembled. I'll show you guys what that looks like. Now that we've done our front, we're gonna assemble the rear. And hopefully it's gonna be a little bit easier now that I've done the front and learned a little bit. Hopefully this will be a lot quicker. So let's do the rear and then we'll be done with our axle housing assembly. For the rear axles, I am gonna use this weight, 42 grams instead of 118 for the outer knuckle housing. And then the inner knuckle housing, we don't have any brass parts that came in the kit. So I'm gonna have to use this component transferred over to our metal axle housing. And otherwise, most of the parts on the rear will also be metal, except for this one little knuckle. Gotta press the bearings in there, transfer the gears over, or at least this component to our new one. Also got our metal diff case. And yeah, let's take it away. So I'm using grease and all these components here. So just making sure that they're well lubricated since it's a lot of metal on metal. And the gearbox housings. And it's also nice to have a seal kind of around the edges where it touches the other components. So it'll seal this and make it hopefully watertight. Yay, we got our rear axle assembled. I had to disassemble it a bunch of times because I forgot to get the pinion gear and the bearings and then I forgot to put the locker cable in there. So, you know, I'm really good at rebuilding diffs now. So yeah, looking good. So we're gonna just install it back on the car and then we're done with our axle housings and portal weights. Have our rear axle housing and knuckles installed. They look really cool. Next, we gotta install our skid plates. I probably should have done that as I was reassembling it, but now we're gonna have to do it after the fact. Skid plates are installed. They're looking really nice. I think this one has another hole for a screw, but I didn't want to have to drill another one. This screw was already on the bottom of the chassis. These are only held on by two screws. Pretty easy to install. Same with the rear. I wonder if these will catch on stuff, but we'll have to try it out. We are finished with the install of the metal upgrades, the brass upgrades and the metal axle housings. I think it looks great. So we're gonna wait on the shocks to install those after I do a trail run so we can do a comparison of before any weight, after the weight, and then after we add the shocks and see what I like better. Let me show you guys what it looks like. I think it looks really good. So we have our hex adapters here. These are 6.4 grams. We have our portal weights. These are 118 grams. Then we have our inner portal housing, 59 grams. These C hubs here, these are 49 grams. I didn't weigh the metal axles, but we have all metal axles and diff box cover. Got our skid plate here. So the rear came with outer portal housing weights and I had to reuse this piece here. So this is all one piece where the gears go in for the portal housing. And that's the only piece that's plastic on it. Otherwise we have our metal axle housing, our diff box on the rear again, skid plate, I think this looks super cool. The final weigh-in. This is after all our metal parts have been installed. So before it was 2290, now we have 2983. So that's about 700 grams of weight added. And it's definitely more weight on the front than it is the rear. So. This is what it looks like with the tires installed. So the portal weights just kind of just slide inside of our rim. Now let's take the rig outside and do our before and after comparison of the rig on the trail. I'm going to do the same features and see if we see any performance differences. And then next I'll put the shocks on and do another comparison. So let's take it outside.
after doing the before and after on my backyard crawler course, my initial assessment is that it did perform a lot better on some of the features where there's a really steep climb. So specifically the stair feature and the rope bridge. I did notice that the front end kind of hugged the feature a lot better than without the weight. So that was cool. But on some of our steeper descents, like the stair feature, I did see a little bit of loss of performance. There's a lot of weight up front, so it wants to just keep that momentum going. I might have to play around with some of the weight placement in the rig after I have a little bit more experience on the trail with the added weight. But otherwise, I'm really satisfied with the Yacht Racing hop up parts, the metal axles, and all the brass weight was a ton of fun to install. I learned a lot about the TRX4 in the process. I'm gonna save our shocks for another video. I'll have to install these and review these in another video. I didn't wanna to add too many changes because I wanted to be able to see what the added weight did to the performance of the rig without added shocks. But I hope you guys found this video useful if you too are looking to add weight to your rig. Make sure to like and subscribe. I have a ton more videos to bring you guys. It's raining outside now, so that means more RC. Thanks for watching. RC you later.